Okay, it's time for another music review. And today I'm going to review the first album by the Stour Council, Council called Café Bleu, and it was uh, released in 1984. A little bit uh, of a background to the Stour Council. Uh, for those that don't know, the band was founded in late 1982 by Paul Weller, of course, the singer, songwriter and guitarist with the punk new wave band, uh, The uh, Jam, and keyboardist Mike Mick, sorry, Mick Talbert, who spent a short period with the Dexy Midnight's Runners and also was in bands called The Bureau and the Merton Parkers. Uh, two bands that I'm really not that familiar with. Uh, the band enabled Weller to take his music in a new, more soulful musical direction. And he chose Talbot, apparently, because uh, Talbot shared his uh, hatred for the rock myth and the rock culture. So now you know. Uh, the permanent lineup for the Style Council grew to include drummer Steve White, who stayed with uh, Weller uh, for the first part of his solo career, and also Weller's uh, at the time girlfriend, uh, vocalist D.C. Lee, who became uh, his wife and mother to his children. And on this album, there are some guest appearances from notables. Uh, such as uh, Tracy Thorne from Everything But The Girl and Ben Watt uh, and drummer percussionist Steve Sidelneck who apparently played with Madonna Seal and Richard Ashcroft. Okay, as with Weller's previous band, uh, most of the London-based group's hits were in their homeland where they scored seven top ten hits. The band showed a, a, a diversity of musical styles and singles like Speak Like a Child with a, a loud soul influence, the extended uh, funk of Money Go Round and the synthesized ballad Long Hot Summer, uh, which featured Talbot on keyboards and organ, are all big hits. But near the end of the 83, these songs were compiled on a mini album called Introducing the Style Council, but it was released in Japan, uh, the Netherlands, Canada and the US, not in the UK. Uh, the UK had to be satisfied with imported uh, versions. Well, in February 1984, the single My Ever Changing Moods uh, hit the airways and it became a huge uh, top 10 hit in the UK. And then this debut album, Café Bleu, uh, released a month later and it was also hugely successful. Now, Café Bleu, well, uh, it certainly does encompass uh, a variety of genres. Jazz, a bit of funk, soul, pop, of course, and a uh, lounge sort of jazz, uh, amongst others. Right, now I'm going to go to the track list, uh, and as usual, I will be uh, going through it track by track, and I will also be uh, doing a few excerpts of the lyrics because the lyrics are pretty important in Paul Weller's life. Um, he's a, quite a political animal and I think you need to get an in, insight into what was on his mind at that time. Um, we start off though with a instrumental called Mixed Blessings. It's got some lovely jazzy piano uh, with some cymbals. Joculent it certainly is. And Tal Talbot uh, really shows his virtuoso uh, appeal as a piano rocker. Then let's turn to track two, The Whole Point of No Return. It's very moody, uh, well as vocals lead into a, a slow, funky jazz lounge beat. And the rhythm guitar is uh, very pleasing. Uh, lyrically, I think Paul's having a dig at the ruling classes here. Uh, intent on not mixing the races, pure breeding, that sort of message. Some clever metaphors relating to the sparrow being the public uh, and the masses. And here's a little excerpt. The Lord and ladies pass a ruling that sons and girls go hand in land from good stock and the best breeding, paid for by the servile class. 
who have been told or lie in state to bow down forth and face their fate. A couple of more instrumentals up next. Uh, track three, Me Ship Came In. Lots of horns on this and a skippy jazz funk beat instrumental with lots of Talbot piano. It's very impressive and the horns flit in and out and there's an expiring sax solo with a thunder, thunder, thunderous bass. This moves on to track four, Blue Café. Uh, very much uh, French uh, patisserie here with uh, some lush strings on top of a petite loy guitar. It's very tasteful, very ex exhilarating. Next up then is the Paris March. Sorry, the Paris Match. Uh, it's an idyllic lounge jazz sound with Tracy uh, Thorne on lead vocals. Very soulful. Uh, entwining you into the Paris move. It's got an aesthetic beauty uh, through the piano, which Talbot uh, highlights. Lyrically, I think it's a, basically about the special feeling of romantic love and how one strives to find it again and again. And here's a brief extract. Empty hours spent combing the streets. In daytime showers, they become the beat. As I walk from cafe to bar, I wish I knew where you are because you're clouding my mind and now I'm all out of time. The What I consider to be one of the better tracks on this album, a gospel, uh, although it's got a sort of rap venture, really. Dizzy heights uh, it might be, but very experimental and out of place here, perhaps. So uh, my first point, about it being one of my favourites, of course, was Tongue in Cheek. However, the lyrics are worth a read. It's a bit of a history lesson about how behaviour is learnt and how it changes into a political narrative that's destructive and full of ignorance and false belief. It's probably got a dig at the US. And here's an extract handed down from fathers to sons was the hatred of weakness and the love of guns. A talk of peace, but not in our time, to save our souls and stop the crime. Onwards and upwards, but going nowhere. So how many now truthfully swear that they do no evil, see no wrong? The ad mass agents, the writers of song, the bankers, the poets, the modern day seers. Clouding an issue that was never quite clear, sent through the ages of boy to men. The living testament of making a stand and killing the wicked, then raising the dead, eating proper propaganda, and shit spoon-fed. Next up is Strength of Your Nature, and DC Lee features on Lee vocals on this. It's very funky. It's almost funk meets punk with frantic horns and keyboards. It's uh, experimental, to be sure, and the harmony vocals are very early uh, Phil Spectorous, I thought, uh, and it's got a sort of Tina Turner style lead vocals from DC Lee. Uh, Wellows guitar gives a nod to Prince and possibly Curtis and Mayfield. I couldn't find the lyric to this, so no excerpts. Uh, number 10 was You're the Best Thing. Oh, what a gorgeous ballad this is. A huge uh, hit, of course, and fine guitar and Paul, Paul slotting into soul pop comfortably. comfortably. It's also got a very jazz-like lead solo with acoustic chords mellowing the overall sound. It hi highlights really the lack of bass on the album, but a great chorus and an album standout. Now let's have a look at those lyrics. Uh, another message to be content with what you have that is good and don't constantly strive for more and more uh, as it could end up to be less. And here's an excerpt. I could be discontent and chase the rainbow's end. I might win much more, but lose all that is mine. I could be a lot, but I know I'm not. Uh, I'm content just with, with the riches that you bring. I might shoot to win and commit the sin of wanting more than I've already got. I could run away, but I'd rather stay in the warmth of your smile lighting up my day. The one that makes me say, hey. Here's one that got away is next. It's compar comparatively middle-of-the-road rock soul song, really, that gives Paul 
uh, and DC an opportunity to do to combine those vocals. There's an interesting violin uh, put in, and here the bass does glide along with White White's terrific drums. Lyrically, I think this is about peer group pressure as a reuse and how the notion of normal and a team player player can get very distorted. And here's a little look at it, uh, an excerpt. The pub talk, the scandals, like vandals, they try to tear you down. The whispers turn rumours. There's no truth, but that don't stop those cats. They need the little bit extra. They don't mind if it's only conjecture. They tried to tell me I wasn't full time. I tried to think of an alibi. So, track 12. Head Start for Happiness, another hit. Uh, mixed piano melody hits the brass perfectly. And DC is at her most soulful here. But Paul shows his development as a singer as well with a range that far extends his jam uh, uh, inputs. I love the whipped up vocals from DC and the rhythm is fast. Um, lyrically, it's about the power of love to enable self-confidence and purposefulness to thrive with somebody special. It's obviously about Paul and DC, I would suggest. And then uh, we get on to the final track, which is an instrumental called Council Meeting. And it enables Tol Tolbert once again to show off his nifty keyboard skills. That's about it. Um, I thought it was a terrific debut. Um, uh, it got a lot of critics got on the back of this. I don't know what they were expecting, really. He told everyone that he'd given up on the jam because he wanted to move on. And this was certainly a move on. Um, after this first album, there are other albums possibly didn't quite hit uh, the right targets. But I thought this was an exceptional beginning. And it highlighted the uh, extreme talents of Mick Tolbert and Steve White particularly. Uh, and I've got a lot of time for this album, uh, as I have with virtually everything that Weller has done. So I would really suggest you really sit down and listen to this one. Uh, and of course, a, a, a major contribution of in instrumental music uh, to his repertoire, something that we will never heard with the jam. So get to it. It's 1984's Café Bleu, and it's by the Style Council.